Today, I'm going to try my hand at restoring game boxes made of cardboard. I've seen a few other channels cover this in recent years, most notably RMC. I've gleaned tips from him and others, and will attempt to combine the best for the most favourable outcome. With this idea in mind, I took stock of my game collection with cardboard boxes. I've never really analysed them all at once before, and was surprised by the decent condition of most. One game stood out by far however, the NES Classics version of Pac-Man on Game Boy Advance. This box appears to have had a difficult life, and it was in this condition when I obtained it I swear. Completely out of shape, there are tears, missing segments, and residue from stickers. Let's call this video a test, and see how I do. I doubt anyone will care if I mess it up, right? Surely a GBA version of Pac-Man isn't worth that much boxed. Hmm, coming down eBay. We're going to start by reforming the shape of the box, but first, we need to pull out the innards. If the structure of the insert is in a bad way, there are steps we can take to rectify that as well. And hey, look at that, the missing tab. What a nice surprise. We'll attempt to reattach that later in the video. But how do we reform the box back into its former shape? Well, the solution is ironing. Yes, I'm serious, and I can proudly state that after the better part of a decade living out of home, this is the first iron and ironing board I've ever owned. Proud of me? Basically, we're going to iron the box flat. This will mimic its original form during manufacturing before it's folded out into a 3D form. I'm not too cluey on how the ironing achieves this, but it's something to do with the steam and heat from the iron relaxing the cardboard fibres. This temporarily makes the box more malleable, so it will flatten out. Not only will it flatten the box, but should also alleviate any creases. Just like ironing a shirt, really. Or at least, so I'm told. It goes without saying that something needs to be laid over the top of the box. We want to heat it up, but applying heat directly will likely wreck the cardboard or worse. This could be something like an old shirt, or a pillowcase like what I'm using here. Set the iron to medium heat, and spend several minutes on each side, periodically applying steam. Steam is important, so be sure that's a function of your iron. If you're not sure, ask your mum. Okay, that's looking quite flat. While it's still hot, place a fair amount of evenly spaced weight on top so it doesn't try to deform itself. Keeping with the theme of using household items, I utilised a selection of large heavy books. I'm not sure what the minimum time to wait is, but I left it overnight to be sure. Fast forward to the next day, and the box was suitably pancaked. Good. Let's fold it back into shape. I struggled with this initially, especially since there was a tear on the portions that fold into each other on the bottom, so I enlisted the help of a better condition box to guide me. Some more off-camera fiddling later, and the box had a flat bottom again. I could have ironed the insert separately, but decided it was in decent enough shape that it would do its job. It won't be visible after all. Look at that. It now stands up on its own. That's a vast improvement from where we started. But we're not done yet. Let's sort out those tears and see if we can reattach that flap. The key to this, apparently, is a specific type of glue used for book binding. This is acid free, which is important. Everyday PVC glue could cause the cardboard to degrade, which is not exactly what we want in a repair. Thankfully, it's quite cheap. I bought this bottle locally for $7 from Spotlight, which is a local fabric and craft store. As for gluing anything, the key is not to over apply. I started with the tears, dabbing the excess away with a damp paper towel. I then lightly held the two portions together for about a minute. Masking tape is otherwise recommended as advice for larger rips that need longer to set. I made my way around the box before reattaching the flap. This was easier than I thought, I just had to hold it in its 90 degree state for a while. I then waited until the next day, giving the glue ample time to set, and totally forgot to film the result. You'll be able to see this in the following footage anyway, but the flap did indeed stay in place, and become functional again. The tears also didn't reappear. The glue didn't seem to leave any residue or seem to affect the cardboard either, so I recommend this Helmer's brand of glue. It's available in America too, if the description on the bottle is anything to go by. It was now time to tackle the sticker residue. In my research, it appears lighter fluid is the most recommended approach, but since I don't have any on hand, I tested the waters with isopropyl alcohol instead. I was worried this would be too strong and damage the artwork, so I started with a small area first and gave it ample time to dry. As you can see, it had no issue removing the sticker residue, and after drying, the artwork seemed unchanged. So I used that as the go-ahead to remove the rest. This went mostly to plan, 
but I evidently rubbed this red section too hard. So be aware of doing this yourself. It can remove the ink as well. However, I did tread lightly for the rest and there was no more damage. But as always, do your own research before attempting this yourself. Another tip I wanted to try from the other videos was cleaning the box with Windex. This went quite well and is likely another item already laying around the house. Another technique I saw was filling in box art lost to creases. I was a bit wary of this since they were simply using pens and markers to fill in the gaps. I would imagine it would be near impossible to match the correct colour, let alone the texture. But still, not wanting to be dismissive, I decided to trial this in a limited manner. You would think that black is black, so using a sharpie, which is all I had on hand, I only coloured in this right hand side crease. This went… okay. It's not awful, but I'm not that impressed overall. You might be able to pass it off from a distance, but the colour doesn't really match even though it's black. Oh well. And with that, I think we're finished. I don't feel this was exactly a 100% success, but then again, I'm not sure how mind-blowing a result I was really expecting. The box was in quite a poor state originally, and has come quite a long way. It can stand up by itself now after all. It's gone from possible rubbish, to a more acceptable worn and shabby state. I'm happy with that. The fact that this can be achieved with household items is a win too. Sure, you might not have the glue, but that was very affordable. More than anything however, I'm just glad I didn't wreck the thing. Back on the shelf it goes.